Hello everyone, I'm back and here to react to Nostalgia Critics Polar Express Review. I love this movie. I actually really enjoy this movie a lot. It is honestly one of my favorite Christmas movies. The music, the animation I can understand is creepy. I can understand that. I think there's just a weird charm to it for me. I And I don't know, there's just like the scenes, the stories, the songs or whatever. Like whatever, There's just something, I almost want to say it's a comfort movie for me. <laughs> And, but yeah, the, but apart from the humans, the animation, like the, the, the environments, the train, the details, just the details and all that is like really, really well made for the time being, which, what is this, like 2005? Is it? No, it's, I have to double check, but anyway, yeah, so I love this movie, but I'm curious to see what, uh, what this review is going to be like about it. So yeah, without further ado, let's begin. Santa Christ, don't you? Santa, Santa Christ? Christ? Are you kidding? No. He drops by here every year. If I really wanted to see him, I could make it happen. Well, that's a shame. I guess we'll go without you. A lot of people have mixed feelings about the Polar Express. You're not going to let your curiosity get the best of you. Oh, we get the hell out of here. Well, luckily, I slipped the editor a 50, so. I really need to work. I edit things. All right, you are all the people in the world who are not sure if Santa Christ exists. There's only one other person on the train. Shouldn't it be a crazy high number, like 20? I don't question the men who had inconsistent choices with the beard. A lot of people believe in Santa Christ. This kid from certain angles looks a little uncanny like valley. Ah! Sit back and enjoy the enchanted journey of... Well, we're here. <laughs> wow, that was easy. That did not take long at all. My wow, the empty place inside of me is filling up. I simply cannot get enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get a picture. Play some whimsical music. And smile charming but awkwardly at each other. Yeah. Whoa, what is Jesus. This? Next one. I'm sorry, so what was the point of this? Smile. Ah, <laughs> music. Awkward finale. Yeah, I it <laughs> Off you go. Whoa. Wait a minute. That's it? Well, what do you expect? Our source material is a picture book. Yeah. Hey, it's the front page. Remember this enchanted night. It was three minutes. I clocked it at two. Yeah, it was not long at all. I guess when you think about it, snapping a picture book isn't exactly the easiest thing. As much as I mock movies that do it poorly with dog ass kissing mom genocide or dirty hoes, I do acknowledge it is difficult to take a short story for little kids and stretch it out to 90 minutes. That's one of the reasons I think films like Where the Wild Things Are, Hugo, and Paddington, I pretty much consider flawless masterpieces. Yeah, because good. not only did they expand on these incredibly short stories, but they stay true to the vision and themes of them. And, uh... Yeah. You do you. Maybe that's why, despite its flaws, I have grown a soft spot for Robert Zemeckis' Polar Express. <laughs> I'm gonna watch this. Well, now a staple for many around Christmas time. I was both surprised yet not confused about it getting mixed reviews from critics. The short of it is, they were distracted by the uncanny valley of the motion capture animation and felt it was too forcefully trying to become a Christmas classic. I don't disagree. But what the film gets right, especially when compared to other picture book adaptations, I think is worth giving high praise. I remember growing up with the story and really appreciate the film tried to entertain people the same way the source material did, rather than shove whatever slang, pop cultural references, or far yeah. too much humor will be dated in a week. That seems to be less and less with kids' book adaptations, and I really think this film should be applauded for it. But yes, there are clearly things that don't work. Yet, to the film's credit, they are interesting things that don't work. Whether you get into it or you don't, people love to discuss this movie. Like they enjoy figuring out exactly what it is that makes them enjoy it enough, or what it is that turns them off just enough. Mm -hmm. I'll admit I'm one of those people that loves talking about it, and that's what I'm gonna do today. Right. So if you're ready to discuss what doesn't quite look right, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. it doesn't quite not pay for it. Yeah. Better? 
This is the Polar Express. Oh my god. <laughs> First off, I want to give this movie credit for having the balls to actually be rated G. I know it sounds weird, but nowadays and even back then, studios thought a film had to be PG or higher for people to see it. So the land an occasional swear word or sometimes nothing at all to get it that PG rated. This film has more scary imagery than Inside Out, but it doesn't think your kids are pussies. I should also point out this movie was originally supposed to have Tom Hanks as all the roles. He does have a lot of them, but Zemeckis saw he was getting exhausted and scaled it down to motion capturing for only five, including the main kid and the conductor. Only five? Since That's still... Still all the way with him playing all the characters, I think they should have just kept him as the conductor. Yeah. The idea of a one-man show with CG animation I do find fascinating, especially in a story that teases this could all be a dream. But when it's not all him, you do notice the Hankisms more when compared to the characters that are played by other actors. I mean, the idea of getting other actors is to work off different energy of other performances, bringing in something new and fresh. But when half of them are the same person, you get a little too used to the same expressions and reactions. Even the designs look the same. Yeah. Every character he plays has that thick style chin, weird eyeliner That's... eyes, and train whistle lips. Yeah. This isn't makeup, it's animation. You can make him look however you want. Make him look however you want. With that said, I think he does do pretty good. Though Josh Hutcherson does the main character's voice, it worked pretty well oh. with each other to make this kid, named Hero Boy, by the way. Yeah. Did you just watch Gordy? It's Seems like Hero Boy, Hero Girl. There's like only a few kids that have names. Hanks and his best friend play the same role in a PS3 game. So. I suppose everyone's presence, the flood would have to be bigger than the ocean liner. Then yeah, I guess I should talk about the animation, as for many, it is the most distracting part. I personally think it looks great for 2004. This ah, question four. is trying to go beyond what it's capable of doing at the time. And yes, they maybe should have waited 10 more years or so before trying this. But when you realize this came out the same year as Scooby-Doo 2, Van Helsing, and Garfield, you may cut it a little more slack. Ironically, the film looks better when it's trying to capture the surreal look and feel of the book, rather than the realism of human textures and movement yeah. that it's so hard on. The characters don't need to look real, they just need to feel real. And the clever style of yeah. can accomplish that. If it looked yeah. too real, I'd be questioning why the camera can go through glass paper or whatever this is. I think the film shines more when it tries more weird stuff like that. <laughs> Never really thought about that. Yeah, yeah, it's like... is starting to have doubts about Santa, but suddenly a mysterious train appears outside. Sound effects for this is so good. I reckon we have a 50-50 chance at this. Hank. Sorry. Even in a cartoon, I can't take Hanks' cartoon accent seriously. Every second I'm expecting him to go, knock, knock. Go fuck yourself. He says because of the kid's doubt, he's taking him to see Santa along with a bunch of other children. Yay, we're being kidnapped! He discovers a girl named, how's this for original, Hero Girl. They sound like temp names for a Robert Rodriguez kids movie. <laughs> and I swear, the animation direction for her was, Hey Frank, remember when Jack Nicholson played the Joker? Can you little black girl that? You know what, I should be thankful if Hanks was gonna play all the parts. This could've been a lot worse. Jesus. Whoops, did I say she was the freakiest looking character? You know what kind of train this is? Uh, all these late for the know it all, kid. Yes, I can read your thoughts, and I am smarter than you. You crossed that up the list. There's something I love about this moment. Hero Boy looks at a store animatronic and is like, Aw, that's not the real Santa. I thought they captured him and displayed him out front like a zoo. You're a weird kid. <laughs> for the other side of the tracks. I take it back, you're perfectly normal. You're the butthole cut of ass. <laughs> They drop by another kid's house who doesn't get on. But when he changes his mind, almost forming an expression, Hero Boy stops the train. <laughs> okay, that was a good edit. It's hot chocolate, just so every train ride themed after this movie can have some kid shouting, Why are they flipping and doing somersaults like in the film where everybody looks like Superman's upper lip? Where you going, Love that number, though. The hot chocolate's good. In the back, but in doing so, she loses her ticket. It pours gum feathers out the window, and it should be mentioned this film was clearly shot for 3D and IMAX, and to its credit, it looked really good in 3D and IMAX. 
a lot of movies during that time looked like the 3D was added last minute, but this one not only looked like a lot of time was spent on it, but they went out the way to make this a spectacle movie. Even if it's not as impressive on the small screen, the colors and backgrounds are still jaw-dropping, leading to some imaginative and beautiful landscapes, which is what CG really shined in at the time. Yeah. In a strange way, the only thing to distract from the beauty of the Polar Express is what happens on the Polar Express. She didn't lose her ticket, I did. You can have my ticket. These are not transportable. One of the pros and cons to Hanks as the conductor is it always looks like he's about to shank someone in a scene. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh my god! No, it's nothing that crazy. They just climb to the top of the train to make their way to the front. Yeah. What? <laughs> I was like wondering that. Why? Why not? I guess it's possible this is the shadow of the homeless man he discovers on top. If so, why did he take her to the back, and where the fuck did they go? Yeah, they went, They had to have gone. Did there was an inside of the train they were inside of? And by God, how do so many animated characters survive the cold wearing the equivalent of a bath towel? Yeah. That is not... Would you like to hear about movies? No, the best I've ever oh, seen Oh, wow. This is something I can do for you. Also plays the hobo, who's hands down my favorite character. We don't know exactly what he is, but they hint at him either being an angel or a ghost. Though this environment is already otherworldly, there's something even more otherworldly yeah. about it. That image alone of him making a fire on top of the train is pretty damn awesome. Hey, would you like some joe? Nothing like caffeine to bring on hyperthermia faster. I own this train. Huh? Like I'm the king of this train. Yeah, the king. Even when he moves awkwardly, there is kind of an excuse because he's a spirit. Yeah, he's a little, a little animated. Mm -hmm. Even when he's imitating an animatronic Santa, it somehow still looks more awkward and fake than the actual animatronic Santa. <laughs> Screw the fireplace. This is what you should loop on your TV around Christmas time. A lot of the film is discussing doubt and faith. Not necessarily in God or religion, but really about anything important. I do like it isn't just a bland, follow your dreams message as much as sometimes it's hard to know what to believe and there's going to be a lot of trial and error. Like they're saying, there are good times where you need to be skeptical. I want to but... You don't want to be bamboozled, God. You don't want to do much put with You don't want to be taken for a ride through the railroad. I used to watch cable news too, I know the feeling. Even the message of seeing is believing is almost contradicted with the most real things are the ones we can't see. Seeing is believing. The most real things in the world are the things we can't see. There are layers to the message they're getting across. Not tons, but it's like Red Mert's cake. They're all in there. Yeah. We gotta jump down now. They have to get to the front of the train before the tunnel hits, so he uses a pair of ghost skis. I don't know. To get hey. down there. Oh, come on, you call that filler? Jim Carrey would have had his hand in a woman's breast by this point. That's how you fill her. Because he literally fills her. I just realized that. You? I thought you got He gets to the front and discovers Hero Girl, but the train starts speeding out of control. What about this red one? It looks like a brake. No, no, he said this was the brake. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure it isn't the lever that says blatant character arc? The train continues to speed on the world's unsafest track, and it pretty much becomes a VR roller coaster. Yeah. I love this part. We're dropping faster than a presidential approval rating! And then slips onto the ice, and again, this can all be seen as filler, but it is a lot of fun. What more character do I need from these people? I got it. Go ahead yeah. and give me the stuff give that me... CG is best at. Yeah, Imagine spectacle. Destroy Disney. <sighs> Once they literally get back on track, all the children inside are presumed dead, and the conductor talks about a strange time when someone saved him from falling over. Someone saved you? Or something. An angel. Maybe. Nah, that's bullshit. Now let's go see Sam. <laughs> I just got to know. They're brought into a car that's filled with all sorts of forgotten toys. What are they doing? It's a new concept the boss came up with. He calls it Toy Chair. Wait till you see what he has in mind for the one based on me. Oh my gosh. I think this puppet is giving someone a woody. 
Yeah. I just realized they are very similar, that Scrooge and the Scrooge and that um, Jim Carrey one. So, we're about 45 minutes in. Why not suddenly make this a musical? I mean, we already had the chocolate, hot chocolate number. Now I know what you're thinking. What? They had that song earlier. That was a show being put on for the kids on the train. Like I said, they even do that on these Polar Express themed rides. That doesn't make it a musical yet because that could qualify in a non-musical environment. <sighs> this is the first time someone is singing to express their thoughts and it comes right the hell out of Okay, nowhere. fair, fair enough. I feel like Bruce Wayne singing halfway through Batman Begins because they went to an opera earlier. It doesn't count, and it'd be distracting as fuck. All the dreams of children were lost below the ground. It hangs his head. I'm just assuming you were looking for an Oscar already. It also doesn't help that it's not a very good song. It's not awful, but it's cheesy as hell, and it feels like they're trying to plant it as a song you'll sing with other Christmas carols. The best you'll get is children's recitals, and that's because kids kind of remember the notes when they fall asleep during the song. Look, the northern lights. Wow, we literally just saw reindeer and presents in the sky like God's etch a sketch. But this is the moment that impresses us, I guess. What's stranger than everyone singing 45 minutes into the movie? Everyone singing another song immediately after. <laughs> Did I say the last one was a Christmas pageant song? This one you can already see kids in conductor hats perform. <laughs> And you know, for all that build-up, the map pool's kind of boring. It is neat that it's based around the Pullman factory from Chicago, but I'm sorry, this is a lame-ass place to see Santa. It's so lifeless. This I mean, where the elves work. This is where they're imprisoned. Even the music playing makes me think they're all busy they're right now. Bioshock Not living. Order. Yikes! The lights get on the pickup doesn't want to see Santa though. So hero boy and hero girl. These names are so dumb. <laughs> Trying to convince it. Yeah, they should have given them names. It's a beautiful time. It's a time for giving, being thankful, to friends and family, and peer pressure. Christmas is about peer pressure. You saw what happened to Starbucks when they didn't change their cups. Hero boy accidentally disconnects them because he wants to turn this into an Australian train PSA, and they end up inside one of the factories. You put them on a check twice, Mr. Nick Sheep. All right, boys! Let's shut it down, all right? Let's shut for this shit. Come on! Joe Pesci's finest performance. I'm shocked that this scene of them essentially going in a giant bank teller tube is also pretty forgettable. You say what you will, but the thrill ride portions of this movie were great. So riding in what every kid imagines riding in every time they visit the bank should be downright amazing. What do we get? <laughs> like going down McDonald's playground slide while watching 2001 on your phone. And we end up in Santa's sack Come on, everybody. and discover the geeky kid has followed them. Which, how the hell did he do that without being seen? How could you miss anything about this kid? I want to make sure I'm getting everything on my list. All I found was one present. All I had was a bunch of stupid underwear. Is Mother not regretting a hole in condom on your list? To get the bag to the town square and yeah, most of this is stuff in the movie you really could have cut. The bag is too low, so they get more altitude. The star is knocked over. Some elves save it. The kid doesn't trust the elf with his present. Trust me. Not to trust him with the present. Oh. We make waffles every year for you just to destroy it. Why? Because we can. Honestly. When they arrive to when they meet Santa could have been majorly trimmed or completely cut, and you still would have met the theatrical runtime and missed nothing. Apart from the Christmas story kids, I mean, more like a duck fucking a goose. We got plenty of time. We got nothing but time. We got time to kill. Imagine if Lofty Girl listened to a compilation of him instead of her laid back music. And then we run with look like a frozen. Oh my plane. god. I know it's just an optical illusion caused by moonlight and atmosphere. Because you can't put a train track. <laughs> Santa finally arrives, Hero Boy is dismayed that he can't hear the beautiful sounds the sleigh bells make. He finally 
he admits he believes and can suddenly hear them, just as one of the creepier Santa Clauses in film shows up. What was that you said? I said, I deserve my name! What's that, this young fellow right here? Santa picks Hero Boy to be the first child to be given a present, and the elves are hoping it's a wheelchair because I guess they think he can't walk. What would you like for Christmas? That won't be illegal until... That will never be illegal. The first guest of Christmas! The boy asks for the sleigh bell, and no, I don't know why that needed to be whispered. He was just gonna announce it anyway. And Santa finally rides off into the night. Uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, folks. <laughs> you don't say that. All right. Well, fast get started on the funeral. Why does this blood smell like candy canes? It's funny. For as hard as Mecca's tried to make this timeless, it's like he said, eh, let me have one painfully dated thing in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about that, but... Even though this isn't a Weinstein production, I still feel like they stepped in for that joke. The elves all dance with completely blank faces, but when Hero Boy gets to the train, he discovers the silver bell is gone, falling through a hole in his pocket. Ha! You should have asked for a new robe for Christmas, dumbass! Gee, that's really too bad. Really? If I could clone you so I could repeatedly kill you, I went because temporarily that would mean there'd be more than one of you, but I would think about it very closely. <laughs> for hours. <laughs> children are dropped off back home where they'll wait for their presents to be delivered. It doesn't matter where they're going. What matters is deciding to get on. So remember, kid, when a stranger asks you in the middle of the night to go with them to see Santa Claus, do it. You'll have no regrets whatsoever. Wake up, Santa's been here, Santa's been here! The next morning, Hero Boy opens all his gifts and sees a special one from Santa. It's a lump of coal. It says thanks for dropping my bell, ass. No, it's the silver bell he dropped in the sleigh, but only the children seem to hear its beautiful sound. Oh. Oh. Sorry about that, sport. Teacher says every time a bell rings, a 3D animator cries looking back years later. <laughs> myself warming up to it more and more. When it came out, I guess I was more critical of it, and yes, all the problems people point out are true, but after so many lesser cheap adaptations of kids' films, I really do admire this one tried to pull as much from the book as possible. It was trying to be timeless, innovative, and memorable. And for 2004, I think it did succeed. So the errors cool, are very obvious, though terms of the awkward facial expressions, which CG has gotten a lot better at. So if someone just can't get into it because of the uncomfortable faces, I understand. That's where you can get the majority of emotions from. For me, though, it isn't just the faces. It's the background, it's the themes, it's the atmosphere and environment. Yeah. That speaks to me just as much. And while those two aren't perfect, I still leave feeling, maybe not whimsically enchanted, but comfortably entertained. I still get that nice, snug feeling you associate with Christmas while watching it. Like someone made a really well-thought-out production of some sort of Christmas play, but it was done with weirdly carved marionette puppets. Yes, that's distracting, but you still feel the effort. Yeah. It may not be a masterpiece, but whether you're a fan or not, it's definitely an experience either way. Okay, Granny, I tried last week. How's this look? I don't know where you live, but move right out of the way. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I think, I think that was very accurate to how I was feeling about that movie, is that, I mean, I don't have a problem with the, the faces as much, although they are weird still. The more, it's like, when you look at it, you really notice it more. I don't really look at it, per se. But yeah, the, the backgrounds, the music, the themes, the experience, like, everything, everything that movie um, did, I feel is timeless. I almost, you know, I wondered that, like, you could do a silent movie like that or something. 
maybe not a silent movie, but like, you know, edit it down for less awkwardness <laughs> and more of the experience. Because yeah, yeah, there were there were a lot of weird moments, but again, I I still think it's one of my favorites. One of my favorites. I definitely enjoy watching it every year. And yeah, I actually I wanna I wanna watch it again. <laughs> it's Christmas time, it's time to watch it. So yeah. Thank you all for watching this. I hope you enjoyed. Take care and we'll see you there in the next episode. Bye-bye.